I hate to say it, it's only going to be going one way, and that is Novak Djokovic will win Wimbledon this year. I can't see him losing. Simply too good. So dominant here at Wimbledon, and I reckon he's going to get two, number 24 and five Wimbledons in a row. The only person that can stop Novak Djokovic in this tournament is Novak Djokovic. Andy That's... Murray. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Or as Sir Andy will come on. Other than that, it'll be Djokovic against his own body. Can he keep his body fit for the whole two weeks? If he can, probably name on the trophy. She has the easiest draw out of everyone. And I feel that Eager will win Wimbledon. She had the practice tournament this time. She didn't have one last year. She probably learned from her mistake. I'm going to be going for Donna Vekic, the one with the 17th easiest draw according to AI. And I'm going to be having Donna Vekic winning Wimbledon 2023. I would love to see Novak Djokovic take home his 24th Grand Slam title this year at Wimbledon. And I would like to see Sabalenka win as well. Sebastian Korda claiming his first Grand Slam title. On the women's side, I'm going past the Binko. Kicking off on the men's side, Novak Djokovic will have as many Grand Slams as there are hours in the day. And on the women's side, I'm going with Anz Jabeur. She's going to be your women's champion. Let's go! Another big win for Novak Djokovic in the men's singles. And for the women's, I think Ons Jabeur is going to make us very happy and she's going to take the women's Wimbledon title. Djokovic's dreams of a calendar slam are going to be shattered again. And it's the little Spaniard that's going to do it. Carlitos Alcaraz will win Wimbledon. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Day eight now in the books. It's been a great day of tennis. We had some matches getting, well, finished off from the day before. Big man, Novak Djokovic. He drops his first set, but he goes through to the quarterfinals. And that's what we're here to discuss today. Carlos Alcalaz also looking impressive knocking out the former finalist, Matteo Bellatini. And there's another guy on the scene. He's the new breed. He's JG's favorite. That's right. Chris Eubanks is also through. We're going to be going through all of that on this quarterfinal preview. Yes, that's right, Ben. And we will be doing a women's quarterfinal preview straight after this one. So don't go anywhere. But let's start with the men's. And I'm going to start with Carlos Alcaraz because he is the youngest men's player to win nine consecutive matches on grass since Boris Becker in 1987. Wow. He is breaking records, the kid. And a lot of people doubted him, partly me and you as well, against Berrettini. He's not been amazing uh, in the build-up. No, sorry, in the in the build-up to this match against Berrettini. He played yeah. some good matches against Sardi. Against Jarry, he was a bit hit and miss at times. Against Muller, I think that maybe was, was his weakest of matches. And Berrettini has been flawless, not faced a break point at all, all tournament, demolished uh, Alex Dimonor and Zverev. And some people were saying that they think Berrettini is going to wipe the floor with Carlos here. I thought Berrettini could win maybe in five. I think you went with the same. Kyrgios was tweeting during the match saying that Berrettini is the only person who can really challenge Djokovic here at Wimbledon. He said you need to be a big server to stand a chance. And he fancied also Berrettini to be Alcaraz. It was all wrong because Carlos Alcaraz come through in four sets. And boy, did he look good in spells. The forehand was firing. He was finding some really brilliant returns because returning serve from Berrettini on the grass must be one of the hardest things you can do in tennis. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I thought that Carlos Alcaraz, his aggression in today's match was the key to his victory. He took his opportunities when they arose and there weren't that many of them on the Berrettini serve, but... When he got into a Berrettini service game, you saw Berrettini, he sort of fell apart a bit. And he was some love 40s, stuff like that on the, on his serve. And Alcalaz, you can't give him three opportunities because he's not going to pass up three in a row. And he was able to break him on a, a few occasions. And he looked the stronger player. Uh, by the end, he looked like he wanted it more. Berrettini... He was reliant on the slice uh, from the backhand. We know that that's his go-to normally. He doesn't really have the the biggest of, like offense off of that backhand side. And Alcalaz took advantage, peppered it quite nicely and mixed in with some 
cross-court forehands as well. Some drop shots in for variety. And I think he served really well today as well, Carlos Alcalaz. And he got through that match and it was just under three hours. And Berrettini in four, that one, Djokovic would even be probably quite happy with that type of result. So I think he's come on leaps and bounds, Carlos Alcalaz. And to get a result like that over an in-form Matteo Berrettini. Grass quarter as well. Puts him in good stead, doesn't it? For his quarterfinal matchup. Yeah, before we get on to the quarterfinal, let's just go through some of the other matches too. Uh, with I don't know if you'll bring up the tweet from Relevant Tennis, because this is what Berrettini oh. had to say in the post-match interview. He said, Carlos's returns remind me of, let's bring it up, go on. of Novak a little bit. This kind of reflex time of reaction like a server. I feel this. His reaction times are unbelievable. He goes with a slice on the first serve. He has great, a great feel and great hands. Well, we know he does because we see all the drop shots from him. So there's yeah. no surprise. And that's what impressed me the most. I'm glad Berrettini said it because we got to watch the match um, in the office today, most of it. And what he was doing particularly well was getting every ball back and he was a slice I say every ball you can't get all of them because he does thunder quite a few aces but getting a lot back more than usual and it, all he yeah. was doing was just slicing it he wasn't trying to kill the ball not trying to find winners off the serve it was sensible tennis from Carlos Alcaraz not something you'd expect to see from a 20 year old no you need to remember that not. sometimes the world number one's 20 years old yeah, and he's set up a quarterfinal with another 20-year-old. And I yeah. think it's one, of, I'm not sure if it's the first time in history, but it is definitely the first time for a very long time that we've got two 20-year-olds playing each other in the quarterfinals at Wimbledon. It's great for men's tennis to see two young superstars. They're the, they're the ones that everybody was sort of hoping coming through the draw. I always hope that those two will collide, Alcalaz and Luna, because I think it's a, a rivalry for the future. And I can't wait to see these two uh, get get it on. It's going to be a day's rest for both of them. Holger Luna, he went through against Grigor Dimitrov. And they both have that similar thing. We've spoken about it before with Holger Luna and Carlos Alcalaz. And it's this mentality. I feel that Holger Luna, we, we could say the same thing about him that we said about Alcalaz in this Wimbledon. I haven't thought he's looked that great either, but he's still winning every single match that he's playing. He's come close to maybe losing on occasion, but he still gets it over the line somehow. And against Dimitrov again today, just incredible shots. Alcaraz has the same. There were some. No one else gets those back. He, he's out, out the court and he plays it round the post. And shots like yeah, that. It is amazing. You don't see from everybody on the tour. And Holger Lund is the same. I saw some very long rallies with Grigor Dimitrov today. And he just has not that extra bit of desire to just run a ball down and just get that last one in, say, a 30-shot rally. And he'll still finish it off. And you saw Dimitrov's face after some of them. He just thought, is this like a joke or something? I thought I just played like lights out tennis there. And it's it's just come back to bite me. But Dimitrov, fair play. He played great. Uh, you know what you get with him. He's sort of uh, an all-round good player. But when he comes up against somebody with that sort of mentality, I feel that he does crumble sometimes. So, well done to Holger Luna. Yeah, good, good tournament for Grigor Dimitrov, though. And yes. I thought he still played some really good shots and he'll be happy with how far he went in this event. I'm... Happy that Holger Rune was able to beat him purely because I think he has more longevity in the fact yes. that he will push a Carlos Alcaraz. I don't think Grigor Dimitrov would have. That's just my opinion. I think he would have rolled over a little bit. Um, and I know you were talking about some young players. We've got the perfect tweet for it from Relevant yes. Tennis. And this is, for the first time, Carlos Alcaraz, Holger Rune and Yannick Sinner are all in the quarterfinals of the same Grand Slam tournament. And they wrote their <laughs> first of many... I didn't realise that this was the case, but it kind of makes sense. We have obviously Adkalaz, I think he missed a few slams recently with injury or didn't play. Sinner has had some tough draws. Runa's only just started to burst on the scene. So it makes sense that we're only getting this now. Yes. How many times are we going to see it? Do you not think that this could be like the the, the moment where now we're always going to see these guys in the in the end of, of slams in the quarterfinals? I think that... That's definitely what's going to be happening. Um, we know that 
we read some stats out about Yannick Sinner now being to the quarterfinals on every single slam a couple of times yep. now. So I feel that that's what the next step for, for these other uh, superstars. Obviously, fact, Alcaraz... I'll be surprised, Ben, that if we don't see in the next 15 years one of these three faces here, so at least one of them in the quarterfinals of every slam moving forward. Yeah, I think you're maybe even deeper, maybe a semi-final. That, my, my, is that too generous? I don't too know. Too generous. Quarterfinals is a little bit safer. I mean, maybe it is, but I think I've got to throw my eggs in a, in the basket and just say that these three are the future. They yeah. could be the big three. Feel that Yannick Sinner, somehow he's dropped a little bit behind. He was the one sort of leading the race uh, a couple of years ago. Now it's Carlos, then it goes Holger, and now Yannick Sinner sort of mopping up in third place but that's just based upon being a little bit flaky with the body that type of thing if he shores that up and we see a little bit more uh body strength from Yannick Sinner and mentality I feel that he's got the game to to obviously beat Alcaraz he's done it a few times already he can probably do the same with Holger Luna as well and Holger Luna should be noted I was listening uh, on the commentary earlier they were saying that I think he played his first grass court match and it was at Queen. <laughs> so this is the person who's never played grass before. Look at him. He's loving it. He's through to the quarterfinals of uh, of Wimbledon. I can't Yeah, but quite that's what makes that. me think he's going to struggle against Carlos. But Maybe, still, but... it is Holger and he's got a heart of a lion. Yes. You saw him today fall over and he gets straight back up and tries to hit another shot against Grigor. He's <laughs> confident, isn't he? Some some yes. people, he's not his cup of tea. They find him a little bit arrogant and annoying. I think that's a little bit harsh. I can understand that he needs to compose himself sometimes a little bit better and be a bit more respectful to his opponent. But that may come with age. He's not going to be a finished product. He's not, No one's perfect in tennis or in life, for that matter. Um, but he definitely is able to use this confidence, which other players aren't able to use, to help him get, in, get over... Big situations, for example, beating Djokovic in a Paris final. Who, yeah. who can say they do something like that in a Masters final, beat Novak Djokovic? Not many young players can. I think a lot of that is because of his confidence. And you may be looking at this photo saying, oh, look how young they all look. Well, we have one which beats it. So Jimmy put a tweet out saying, looking forward to this 2023 Wimbledon quarter final. Let me just find Jimmy. Where are you, Jimmy? There he is. And I just this want to clarify huge. one thing as well, just with the st statistic that I just said. It's not that he's never played on grass. He'd never won on grass up until this year. He did play on grass before, but he'd lost his first three matches last year on grass. This was the first time he's ever won one was at Queen's this year. And now since then, he's got to the Wimbledon quarterfinal. So anyway, let's have a look at this. Looking forward to this one. And who are these two young <laughs> chaps that we're looking at here? I mean, <laughs> this, is Crazy, funny, isn't it? this is a funny photo. I think it's hilarious. I was remember I was saying to you, I was watching. Uh, it came up on one of my like suggested videos of uh, on YouTube. And it was those two playing doubles yeah. when they were when they were kids. And it was just crazy to see them playing doubles together. It was amazing. They were great together in the doubles. I'd love to see that as a doubles partnership again, if I'm perfectly honest. Don't know if they actually do that. But I think they're too close in rivalry now that they won't play yeah. doubles. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I, I mean, this picture, I mean, hopefully there's a few more like this lurking around because... I'm just hoping it inspires some kids just to see that you can come from playing uh, in these junior events, playing with fellow friends. Maybe you've got, you're in a club and you're playing with other people and you never know, you both make, you might both make it. So follow your dreams. It's, an, it's not just exclusive to one of you being able to do it. This is two people playing and they've both been able to make their dreams a reality and play on the biggest of stages. And now they are yeah. in the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. For those who don't realise the significance of being in the quarterfinals of Wimbledon. I don't even know if you know this, but it gives you a status at the All England Club. So being one of the last eight at Wimbledon means you will always get some kind of hospitality there. So you've Ooh. got access to tickets, uh, 
family uh, are allowed to go more often, friends. You just get an extra bit of uh, access. I'm not sure. I forget the exact terminology because I don't have a tweet for it. But by getting to the last eight, you go down in the books at Wimbledon yeah, and yeah. you get pr special privileges there. Well, amazing. Well, they're definitely going to get special, well, special privileges from this one. And I feel that they're going to go even further in the future. These two, well, one of them's definitely going to be going to a semi-final. That's what we know for sure. I think that it's great. This sort of, this picture, because it highlights as well, they're both from different nations. You've got the dark hair, the Spaniard of Carlos Alcaraz, and you've got the very blonde Holger Luna there as well, obviously from Scan uh, Scandinavia, from Denmark. It, it's brilliant to see. I love the fact that they're very like, they're polar opposites sort of uh, from different nations, but they have the same mentality on a tennis court. And that is win every point as if it's the last one you'll ever play. Yeah, and it's called the the Last Eight Club. Okay, brilliant. It's an exclusive club at Wimbledon. Oh, well, they're both in. Good, good for them. Right, exclusive we'll move. members only club for those who have reached the business end at the championships. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I like that. Learning something new. JG's facts. Dun, dun, right. dun. <laughs> Let's move down to the greatest player at Wimbledon. I know we spoke about Carlos Alcaraz. We'll touch on Djokovic um, in a minute. Uh, sorry, Ben. I said the greatest player. I don't know why. Oh, you've sorry. Oh, uh, there he is. Sorry. It's Chris Eubanks. I've been got a bit confused there. I went to Djokovic <laughs> by mistake. Christopher Eubanks. I've been bigging him up no end. And I'm finally glad to say Ben watched a bit of Chris Eubanks today. I, I made did. him watch it. He's not been watching much of him. And boy, did he impress. He beat Stefano Sissipas in five sets, played some great tennis. He was hitting winners. He made a lot of errors, actually, <laughs> today. Yeah. It wasn't his best match of the championship, but it was enough to beat Steph. And Pressure, I mean, how, how high is this guy's ceiling? It's insane. Let's look at his stats on where he's come uh, from, because... He yeah. seems like his rise has happened sort of the last six months. All right. Let me just find the exact one. Here we go. So this is the big man on the rise. That's what they've called it. And one year ago, he was 163. Six months, one, two, three. Three months, 87. So he cracked the top 100. A month ago, 75. <laughs> two weeks ago, 77. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Maybe other people were rising, didn't play any events. A blip. <laughs> and it wasn't a blip. Current live ranking, 31 in the world. This means he's going to be a seed, most likely, for the US Open. Yes. Well, you have to keep it up. I and mean, that would be great, obviously, being American. I saw there was Coco Goff sat courtside supporting him. Coco Goff's parents as well yeah. were there supporting the him. occasion. It's brilliant to see, though. I love the fact that everybody's getting behind him. Like, some people aren't that close in the camps. And, and I feel that the, the U.S. have got a real good thing. They're, they're pretty close-knit, all of the U.S. players. And I like to see them supporting each other when they're not playing. Obviously, Coco Goff, she's been out of the tournament for some time in the singles. And I think that she just really just transferred her single support all onto uh, Chris Eubank, I think. I know that Pagula's still in as well, but I feel that she's supporting uh, Chris Eubank more than she's supporting Pagula at the moment. Yeah, Another member thing. has joined the final eight club for the first time Whoa. as well. So we'll have Wimbledon credentials and tickets for life as a member of the final eight club, which can change um, a lot of his, for his life, lifestyle wise. I mean, it's a big thing to be that. It's, it's, you, you become, you're part of the final eight club for life, Ben. Yeah. This is like when you, you uh, take that away from him. This is like when you win uh, Augusta in the golf, isn't it? Yep. Like at the masters and you get the green jacket. Like they can't take that green jacket away no. from you. Just like this. You'll see Chris Eubanks there every single year now. He'll be there flaunting his last eight club privileges. Well, maybe he'll get there again next year. Maybe one better. He's got the game and he's famously said he hates grass courts. And <laughs> I think uh, in the interview, he was asked about this comment and he said, that is not the case. I absolutely adore the grass now. So he's changed <laughs> and he's very happy on the surface. 
and that is showing in his tennis because he's firing aces, firing big winners. It's an exciting brand of tennis, the one-handed backhand, very Federer-esque, and he showed Steph how to do it today. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I was jinxing him every time that you go, come on, watch him, and then I'd watch, and then he'd hit one about a metre long, and I was like, I'm jinxing him. Every And then I finally caught one of the one-handed backhands. They're just such a short backswing. I don't understand how he does it. He just goes like, whoop. And it goes, like fires <laughs> off. And he finished off the match with an amazing forehand winner as well. Absolutely. Like they're, they're fast shots that are coming off that racket. And there's Steph just had no chance. Some of the serves that Steph put at him came back to his foot before it even landed from the serve. And he was just like, Ugh, like looked all like in a bit of a tiz was on the, on the uh, baseline. He didn't know what was going on. And Steph, being Steph, he just looked a bit like huff and puff on the baseline. And unfortunately, Stefan Sispas, despite a good Wimbledon, he goes tumbling out, doesn't make the quarterfinals. And Chris Eubanks does. And we don't get the, the matchup. I was sort of looking forward maybe to a tasty Medvedev versus Sissipas quarterfinal. But now I'm excited for Chris Eubanks. I think... Uh, your guy, he's traveling through and everybody has to uh, take notice of Chris Eubanks now. He didn't play amazing today. It wasn't his best performance, in fact, but you no. could say it's still very tough to beat Steph, who's been playing in great form. And maybe the, the, the Andy Murray match took a little bit out of him in that fifth set. And that's why coming to the fifth set here, he was a little bit fatigued. But I don't know, really. Eubanks, give him a lot of credit. Yeah. Against O'Connell, he was flawless. And I'm hoping if he can produce the Chris O'Connell level tennis against Medvedev, I think he was, I think he's going to beat him. If he plays like he did against Steph, granted he beats Steph and Steph's a lot better player than Chris O'Connell, I think Medvedev will just frustrate him. He'll get a lot of returns in and in an actual tennis match where we're going to be seeing rallies, I fancy Medvedev more times than, than, than Eubanks. But we're going to get onto the preview in a bit. Let's just finish off some of the men's matches. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure we've done them all, aside from, of course, Novak Djokovic finishing the match against Hubi Hercat. I mean, there's not much to say about it. He he allowed uh, Hercat to set, <laughs> and then after that, it was like, nope, that's enough. And the only thing I do want to say is Novak Djokovic is in his own league altogether here. We're talking about the final eight club. I mean, he's in his final one club. There should be a club, an exclusive Wimbledon club for just Djokovic. I am convinced he's the greatest Wimbledon pl the player to ever play at Wimbledon now. I know some people are going to say Borg or someone's going to say um, Federer, Sam Pras, or Federer. Sam Pras, but no, it's, no. It's, this guy for me is just special. And I mean, he's not lost to the centre court for over 10 years. He's now equal Pete Sam Pras. He's 90% win rate at Wimbledon. 90 wins out of 100 matches. <laughs> That's just an absolute. You'd think beat. that is insane, but the what the reason I don't think it's wow is because Rafael Nadal has the insane stat at Roland Garros, well, and nothing it. will ever equal that. But still, this is ridiculous. I think Rafa's is ninety-seven percent to put it I into think... perspective. I have to get Rafa in there as well because I've had a few comments <laughs> on the YouTube video saying, "JG, come on, say something about Rafa." So there you go, Rafa. Brilliant at Roland Garros. I think that the what Djokovic has tried to do is the yes. fact that Rafa has that record at Roland Garros. He knows that he has to get nearly as good a record at the Australian Open and Wimbledon just to say that, oh, I've got it too. So uh, it's not quite the same percentage, but it's better than anybody else. So that's what Djokovic is aiming for. He would love the most Wimbledons. I think he's just going to want to get double figures in that as well. If he can get double figures in two slams, then... It's just going to be outrageous, but he's a long way to go. He still will get to number number eight first. And these youngsters are getting better and better as it comes along. I'm surprised that Holger Luna was the underdog today. I've just seen that now. Yes. I didn't realize Dimitrov was the, the favorite. But if you took a bet on Holger Luna, well done. You would have made some uh, good money and Eubanks as well. That would have been a good double. <laughs> that would have sure. been... The last really match good. is Daniel Medvedev, Lehechka. I'm not going to speak about it in depth. Medvedev won convincingly, yeah. and we thought he would. Uh, hopefully, Lehechka can recover from his injury, pulled out after the second set. Yeah. So let's get to the quarterfinal predictions. Of course, these are only the matches we did we watched today. If you want to see all of the 
other matches, which we've not spoken about, to get here, then watch yesterday's video where we spoke about Sinner, Sefulin, Rublev and Djokovic in depth. So the yeah. ones at the bottom half, we covered yesterday's match on yesterday's uh, roundup. Today, we've just done the ones at the top. Let's That's get awesome. into it. And quarterfinal, number one, Carlos Alcaraz, Holger Rune. Let's start from the top and work down to Djokovic. <laughs> I mean, it seems like we're starting with the best one, <laughs> which, is, which is crazy. But the way it's gone today, I feel that we're going to get, I think we're going to get five sets and I think it's going to be Alcaraz in five. Okay. I disagree with you massively. I think, um, I know you're saying that, Holger, I think, you, I know you're saying Carlos Alcaraz hasn't been amazing, but I think he has been pretty good still. He has been good. And been a lot better than Holger Una. So on that basis, I think Carlos Alcaraz is in fact going to beat Holger Una in straight sets. I don't think he's going to drop a single set against him. Wow. Even though he's now loves the grass, Holger Una is his new favourite surface. I'm sorry, but that's just the way I see it going. I think Holger Una is going to lose in straight sets. To Carlos. Well, I can't wait for the next one prediction. I'm going to let you go first on it. <laughs> it's going to be Daniel Medvedev versus Chris Eubanks. And a fresh Medvedev only played two sets. It was just a, just a regular ATP 500 event or something for him here. Or maybe a no, there's no Masters on grass, is there? So just a 500 for uh, Medvedev. He knocked out Lehechka and Eubanks went to five. Is that going to play a factor? In this one, they're going to get some rest, which is good, at least. Do you think that does play a factor, though? The fact that he had to play a lot longer? No, I don't think so at all. I'm not worried about that with Chris Eubanks. I'm just worried about his game versus a Daniel Medvedev. Medvedev likes a big server, and I don't think he's going to get in trouble, really, with someone like a Eubanks. Um, it's not a good matchup for Eubanks. I think he would... He would favour himself against a Yannick Sinner more than a Medvedev. Yeah, he's a or a Rublev, even. It's just, Medvedev is not the ideal player for a big server like Eubanks. And with his style as well, I just don't like it. So on that basis, I'm going to have Daniel Medvedev winning in four sets. I'm going to give Eubanks a set. I think it could be closer than that, to be honest. I think it could be Medvedev in five sets. I think it's going to be dramatic. I feel... Eubanks is going to make this one of those real, real exciting ones. And he's going to win the, the fourth set to make it go into a decider. But then I feel that Medvedev will just have that, that experience just to take him over the line. It, I think it'll be like a 6-2 final set. It will be like that. Oh, we've got all the hope. And then, ah, oh, it's just lost the last one with ease. I will but... be supporting Eubanks. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he can get it to five and win the whole thing. Next up on the bottom half, and this yeah. is the real surprise. There's, a, there's always one name you're just not expecting. Neither of us got it as the player to watch, but no. this is the one we've been really looking for. On the countdown episode, we kept looking for that surprise package player, and the, the answer was Sefulin. No one got it right. Or Eubanks. I guess so, yeah. Either of them two. <laughs> they're, they're the two, but Sefulin is even yeah. more of a surprise than Eubanks. Yeah. Crazy. I would never... I don't... I would never have picked him. There's, I'm no. going to hold my hands up. I would never have picked Sefudin. I didn't know he was this good on grass until this tournament. So there you go. He surprised me. He may have surprised a lot of other people as well. Um, people at the BBC probably have never heard of his name before until this week. So <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. We had heard of him. There's even been a button made for him about two years ago or three years ago. So that's how much we know about him. He already has a button. Don't even have to make him a fresh one. So, Yannick Sinner, Roman Sefulin, they played once before. It was on hard court last year. Sinner won in straights. Don't think that means anything. I'm going to go Sinner in four. Sefulin's had... I know you keep saying you didn't know he was a good grass court player, Ben, but he's played no one great. I mean, took Batista a good to five and just about beat him. Shapo. Then beat Moutet, then Pella, and then Shapovalov. I'm sorry. It's like a challenger event. Um, <laughs> no, that's harsh. It's like a 250. It's a 250 Sorry. event written all over it. So Fulin, he's not had to beat anyone that great. And it's a great draw. He's now going to get found out. Yannick Sinner, yet to play a seeded player. Who's got? He's, who's had the worst draw? I mean, Sinner or Sefulin? 
probably you worst, you mean best draw. Oh yeah, I mean, but like, who's had the lesser players? I think. Oh, well, I mean, Zimmer. both of them. That was the real slot in the draw where you wanted to play, and that's why Djokovic's draw I feel so easy because he's going to have a semi final against someone who's just not really been pushed at all, and I think that player is going to be Sinner, and I reckon Sinner wins straight sets. Mm, okay. I mean, Sinner was close to coming a cropper in a set against Galan. That's the only reason that I feel that Safulin. I feel that the Russians have this sort of mentality sometimes where they just don't really care who they're playing and they just play their That's game. True. Karatsev sort of has that sometimes as well. They just play their game and they can just win a set. I don't think he'll have enough, though. Sinner's so good on the grass. He will win that one for me in four. And Rublev Djokovic is the final one. So we've got another Russian. We've got three Russians uh, in this quarterfinal. Yeah, Rublev, first time he's got to the quarterfinal at Wimbledon. Can he beat? He's never been to a semi-final in any Grand Slam. Djokovic was joking about <laughs> it, saying he's, hopefully it doesn't happen against me. Um, but he's going to be hungry. Is Djokovic going to lose to Rublev? I don't think so. Oh, and the last time they played was in a quarterfinal of the Australian Open. And how did that go? <laughs> six one, six two, six four. Yeah, I think it will be slightly tighter sets, but it's going to be straight sets. I'm sorry, Rublev. I don't think he's as good as her catch on the grass, and I think Djokovic is going to just cream him off the court. It could be a three, four, three. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be a seven, five, six, four, six. Two. Okay, so we agree Djokovic is yeah. going to win. So that means it would be the semi finals I predicted pre tournament Alkaz Medvedev and Sinner Djokovic at the bottom. Exactly Ooh. what I thought. I what about what you? I, I don't know. I can't remember. Well, there we go. <laughs> That's boring, Benfield. There's another clue what he even picked. I know you went for the Djokovic Alkaz final. I'm not sure if he had the same four as me. I'm pretty sure he had Sinner at the bottom, though. Uh, just not sure if you had yeah, it, it was definitely the Sinner Djokovic semi final. Unsure if I had Medvedev in there, though. No, well, we can check that afterwards, but there you go. That is our quarter final predictions. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Do you agree with our quarter finals, uh, winners? And what do you think of all the analysis we said about the players in the round before? Let us know in the comments section and join us for the women's one. If you're watching this one after the women's one, hopefully you've enjoyed the women's one. If you're not, then go watch the women's one. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the women's one. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>